Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I paint a water tower from rustyrail.com. It's a resin model that is very simple to put together. Uh, it's an old water tower, so you could use it as an abandoned water tower or possibly a working water tower, depending on the year that you're modeling. So let's head over to the workbench and get started on it. So let's open the package and get started on this. Doesn't look like uh, much cleanup is required. I will do a little bit. So I went through and cleaned up some of the pieces with the uh, X-Acto knife. Just trimming them a little bit. Um, now, this piece that sits on here, I'm going to add a little bit more wood texture to it. Um, I'm using 150 grit sandpaper. And I'm just going one direction. And I will even take Okay Next um, I started some of the stones I thought looked a little too jagged or pointy so I wanted to smooth them down so I just ran my file over it and then some of them I'm actually going to use my Dremel tool I just wanted to smooth some of those stones out, make them a little bit more rounded looking. That is what's so great about the uh, resin castings is that you are able to carve on it a little bit if you want. If you want to add even more wood texture or change it, um, they're easy to work with. Um, and like I said, you don't need to, you could paint it and leave it just how it was. Um, they're, they're pretty nice just straight out of the package. So, um, okay. So now I will wash these in hot soapy water and put a primer on them. So after I washed the castings with hot soapy water, I spray painted a gray primer over them. Then after that completely dried, I put a black wash over them just using black acrylic paint and a lot of water and just brushed it over the entire piece. So you can see that the black got into all of the cracks. I am going to 
put mine together like this. Now, before I start painting it, I went on to my phone and did an image search for some stone. So you can see that there is a lot of, there's brown in it, tan in it, gray, uh, lots of different shades. I also did a search for rusted corrugated metal. So for the roof, we have uh, corrugated metal. And then for the wood on the side, and then for the tank that sits on the top, I want that to be pretty rusted. So it's very important, uh, very helpful anyways, to do some research before you actually start painting. And now that I have these images on my phone, I can set this right next to me while I'm working and uh, use them as reference. So, I'm gonna start out by painting the stone. And for the stone, I am using these colors right here. So I'm using raw umber, medium gray, uh, light taupe, and this is caramel candy. So you have a couple different shades of tan, a dark brown, and a gray. And we'll brush these on. And then after that dries, we'll dry brush uh, some lighter grays, like maybe a pale gray or a slate gray. And we'll dry brush over all the stone. So I put a little bit of each color on my tray. I did add another color, um, camel, just a, a really light tan. And I've got uh, a paper towel and some clean water. And I'm using a number one brush. So I'm going to start with the dark one. You can start with whatever color you want to. And I'm starting on the back side just to sort of get a feel for how this is going to look. And I'm just dabbing it on. I'm not brushing it. I'm just dabbing it. So we're just going random with it. Okay. Now this is going to look pretty splotchy and not very good, but we're going to go in after this all dries and 
start to put in our light grays. So this is just kind of an underpainting. So we'll move on to the next color. So we're just going in areas where we haven't gone yet. Don't worry if you get paint on other items like the barrel or the wood stack. Uh, we'll come back in later and, and paint those. So. Okay, now we'll use our tan, our light tan color. And we may even mix a little bit of gray with it. Again, just hitting areas that um, don't have any paint on it yet. So now I'm just going in with some other... <laughs> and you can mix. Like I said, this is just an underpainting. Um, when we brush our gray over the top of this... It'll all come together. So I've finished all of the stone with the base colors. Now we're going to take slate gray we're going to dry brush that slate gray over the entire piece uh, I'm going to switch brushes just to make sure that it's really nice and dry so we're getting a lot of the paint off of the brush not all of the paint but a bunch you can see I'm just taking my time and going over some of the individual stones. So again, we'll pull up the reference on the phone. And next, we'll go with the lightest gray. It's a pale gray. Again, I'm going to switch brushes just to make sure that it's going back to our original brush because now it's completely dry. So again, just getting most of the paint off of the brush. 
we're not going to do much on this light gray. Really, we're just focusing more towards the top. And as you can see, I'm just brushing it straight down, dragging it straight down, just hitting some of the edges. Definitely go heavier towards the top. Just because it would be getting more uh, direct sunlight. So it would be... We're kind of trying to put in highlights that the sun would be creating. So down low, so down low there's not going to be a lot of natural light. I don't know if you can see all the different shades in there. Let me try turning off this big light behind me. For the wood, we're going to use our same colors. Um, we're just going to make it a little bit warmer. We don't want to, we won't add gray to it. And again, we are dry brushing. So I'm just mixing, uh, let's see, caramel candy and light taupe. And I'm probably mixing it 50-50. And we're just going to dry brush over the wood. And again, just ignore everything around it. Uh, as you can see, we're just painting right over the hinges. The little horseshoe at the top. We'll come back in and paint that stuff later. So the wood is all done. And I did do a very light wash towards the bottom of the um, raw umber. Now we'll quick uh, blow dry that. Now I am going to make this look like at one time that shed was painted white. And I am going to use vintage white. So let's shake that up good. I'm using a uh, number zero brush that's completely dry. And we're very lightly dry brushing it. And obviously they'll be less at the bottom just because of the weather. And we'll put a little bit more towards the top. I think this will provide a really nice contrast when we put the 
rust on the corrugated metal and we have the rust on the tank on the top and then we'll get some color down here on uh, these detail items we're just trying to avoid making everything the same color so here you can see um, the one side is done and the other is not just to give you an example of what it looks like and we may leave I may leave that board in the center unpainted like that board at one time was replaced next we're going to paint the corrugated metal and for this we're using all AK products we're going to start with light rust and we're going to start by using a sponge You can also brush some on if you want. We definitely want to make it look like individual panels. Okay, now we'll move on to medium rust. Then we'll do dark rust. So again, we're just focusing on individual panels. This is old rust. Let's dry this a little bit. This one we're really just going to want to focus towards the edges. Okay, so we'll dry this good. Next, we're gonna use some pastel chalks on it. I'm using this uh, orange sort of rust color. There's even kind of a reddish one in there. Okay. 
have to be very careful don't scrub too hard I just scrubbed a little too hard and um, I scrubbed some of the paint right off so you want to avoid putting too much pressure I scrubbed it pretty hard which I shouldn't have but I'll show you uh, I can patch it up but I don't know if you can see up there but we'll take care of that with the next color okay so for the last color on this we're going to be dry brushing um, chipping color This is the darkest one. And I'm using a number zero brush. So we are just wanting to get the paint on the raised ribbed areas of the corrugated metal. We'll cover up that area where I scrub paint off. As you can see in my palette, I have a tendency to put too much paint onto my palette I'm constantly fighting that sometimes I will take my brush and scoop up as much as I can and put it back in the container but I don't know why I just have a tendency to put too much paint on the palette thinking I need more than what I do really doesn't take that much okay next I think we will paint um, the wood that's on the top and for that we are going to use a burnt umber It's really nice having the gray primer on there under the colors, especially with the wood. It really gives it an old aged look. Actually, I was just thinking the top of those get covered. Uh, there's a plate that goes on there. So really, I just need to do the sides. Now we'll add a little bit of value to that wood. Um, we'll just mix up uh, the light taupe and a little bit of the light gray. So we're just dry brushing over that wood and if you think it's a little too light you can simply we'll do a, a dark brown and a gray Okay, next, there's a little door on the side, and we're going to make that green, and I'm using light avocado. So 
So I'm just using the same brush. You can even mix some browns in there if you want. You can see it's not a bright green or a dark green like a forest green. It's just a very light neutral green. So it's not overpowering but it still stands out. And again we'll go heavier towards the top. Now once that dries, we can weather it a little bit more, add some dirt at the bottom with the uh, pastel chalks. Now there's a barrel here and I'm using, I'm gonna use caramel candy on it. And again, we're just kind of dry brushing. We definitely want to leave the black and gray showing in the cracks so there's metal bands on this and we'll go back in and paint those after this dries let's put a we're going to put a red barrel uh, with a white stripe on it. I have noticed on Facebook um, people are ordering some castings from RustyRail.com which is awesome. Uh, I see they're painting them and putting them on their models. So uh, it's really good to see that people are actually uh, buying the castings and painting them you know with any castings that you buy some will show up and need very little cleaning done to them some will show up and need a bunch of cleaning and it can even be from the same company um, I think that's just part of buying castings whether they're resin white metal um, plastic, whatever they are, um, chances are they're going to need a little bit of cleanup. And like I said, some may need more cleanup than others. So don't be disappointed if you do order some castings from a company and they show up and they just need a bunch of cleanup. You can clean them up with your X-Acto knife and some little uh little files um, i don't know where my files let's see i have all different sizes but little files like this okay so um let's see what other color do we want let's put a uh, Let's do a yellow can. We'll get that red out of our brush. Wash it good. Actually, we'll switch. We'll just go to the brush that's dry. I just bought some new brushes. Um, these were $5.99 at Michael's. Then I had a coupon for 40% off one purchase. So, uh, great, just a great value on these brushes. I just, I don't know why I didn't open them for this project, but uh, that's okay. These are, these are working fine. 
but they do get beat up they just they just do um especially with dry brushing over rough areas it beats up the brushes so eventually you have to replace them let's do um, turquoise No, sorry, we're going to use uh, Sea Breeze next. There's a can right here in front. And again, I know this is a bright color. Um, but we'll tone it down. We can put a wash of a black over it or a gray wash. Some color wash to tone it down after it's all dry. Next, we're going to use blue, and we're using Blue Harbor. And we're using our number zero brush. Okay, let's switch to silver. So we have a trash can back here in the corner. And we just want to dry brush it so that we get some of those ribs on the trash can showing. So I have finished uh, painting all the details. Um, and then what I did was, you know, I just dabbed my brush a little bit into the um, burnt umber, a little bit into the tan color added a lot of water and just created a wash and then brushed it over the white on the shed just to tone it down just to tone it down a little bit um, while I'm thinking of it we're gonna darken these hinges a little bit so it's nice to be able to play around with all the different colors on your palette um, and just dip your brush in there, create little washes to put over different items. You can see I uh, painted the wood pile, got my metal bands on my barrel, finished the, uh, the door, just did some dry brushing on it, did some black pastel chalks towards the bottom, all the way around really. So I'm going to put some uh, mold moss uh, at the bottom of the stone and I'm using a green pastel chalk Just using an old kind of stiff brush I'll probably glue some ivy growing up the side of this. Hopefully you'll be able to see that.
Okay. Now we will rust our tank. So we're going to work from dark to light on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm using burnt umber. And I'm using kind of a big brush. Uh, I guess it says number eight. I'm just creating a wash. And we're going in one direction, dragging our brush down the side of it. Okay, now we'll let that sit and dry. So while I was waiting for the tank to dry, um, I did some dry brushing. I used uh, desert sand and did some dry brushing on the door to give it some highlights. And then I also did a little bit of dry brushing with neutral gray on some of the stone. Um, I didn't like how it was so it was too close to the lightness of the the wood and so i wanted to definitely show a difference between the wood and the stone so i just toned it down a little bit by dry brushing some uh, dark gray over it okay now that this is all dry um, we're going to do another wash over it using um, burnt sienna. So I know I've talked about it many times, um, but as you can see from this video, it's all about layers, about building up your layers slowly. The payoff is in the end result. If you just use paints straight out of the bottle without doing any layers over it, um, this won't look as realistic. So I feel to create a realistic look, you want to add uh, a lot of layers to it. Okay, now we'll let that completely dry. Now we're going to use the AK products again. So as you can see, it's already taking on a nice rusty look. Hopefully you're seeing the the shades of rust okay so we're going to go back to using our sponge we're going to start with the light rust as you can see we're just going in a random pattern okay now we'll move on to uh, medium rust so with each color we're going to do less and less and then also start focusing more towards the bottom
Okay, now we'll move on to dark rust. And for the dark rust, I'm now going to start applying it with a paintbrush. And I am going to open up the new brushes. And I think we'll go with maybe the second to smallest one. And now we're going to try to stick to um, painting the individual panels. As the paint comes off the brush and starts to dry, you can also um, do some dry brushing. So you can see now I'm just scrubbing it over it. There are some little areas where it chipped and we'll go in with a dark rust and fill those areas. Okay, so I'm doing a little bit of old rust. We'll start to cover up some of those spots where it chipped. So I'm kind of going underneath um, the panels. So the bottom is looking a little too orange for me. So I think I'm going to put a wash over the sides. I won't go all the way to the top. It'll just be sort of the lower half. It's really just about experimenting until you get the look that you're happy with. As many times as I've painted rust, uh, I don't have it down to an exact science. Every piece is different. So we'll dry this and um, see what it looks like. I think that's looking a lot better. Okay, so next we'll go with the dark chipping color. And this will be on the edge of the panels. So for this, I'm going to use my smallest, smallest brush. pretty dark already but I'm going to add a touch of black to it. Now this is not a straight black, it's wrought iron. So it's a super dark gray. And you know, let's try let's try using the sponge a little bit at the bottom. We're going very light. As it starts to dry on the sponge and more comes off, then we'll be able to go a little higher with it because then we can um, get little finer dots with it. Right now there's just too much on it to, which is okay for the bottom. But like I said, once 
it starts to dry and we get some more off of it then we can go a little higher with it at this point it's even hard to tell if any is coming off oh yeah a little bit Now let's take some pastel chalks. So I'm using a, a flatter, rounder brush. It's a number four. And again, just going over the orange rust color. I have one that's a little bit more of a reddish color. Okay, our tank is looking pretty rusty. So let's see what it looks like on our model. I still need to um, put wood, paint that to look like wood. Uh, for now, we'll just put it like this. So I think there's a nice variety in subtle colors, uh, a variety in texture. You've got rusted metal, stone, wood, the rusted corrugated metal. So I've been working on the top platform and the ladder. And first I started dry brushing with light taupe. Then after that dried, I went and dry brushed it with camel. I then mixed the camel and the vintage white and dry brushed it a third time. Now that this is completely dry, I am going to put a wash over it of raw umber. And we'll even put in a little bit, I think this is the burnt umber. Um, probably mixing a little bit of orange in there, but so we'll see what this looks like um, on this end. Make sure we get our edges, and then we'll also do the same on the ladder. Maybe we'll go a little darker towards the bottom of the ladder. Maybe right up the center. Okay. Just hitting some individual boards, putting some lines. So after it dried, I still think that it looks a little too new. So we're going to take um, a really dark gray. It's called zinc. Uh, 
Okay, that's toning it down really nice. Giving it more of a driftwood look. Okay, we'll let that dry. But you can see already that it's... Um, it just gives it more of a, like I said, an old dried out driftwood look. So as you can see, the project is finished. I painted the ladder on the side of the tank to match this ladder. I have not glued any of it together. Um, I'll show you the ladder quick. And there's a little wood hatch uh, that I painted on the top. And then on the top, I took some pastel chalks and a brush and brushed that on. I think this is such a neat little little structure. Very inexpensive. Um, really, the paint's inexpensive. Um, the only thing is that it takes some time to paint. And I'll get this all glued together and probably get a little bit of ivy growing up the side of it. Um, and that project is done. And again, it is rusty rail. I forgot to uh, paint the little pipe that comes with it, but it does have this little pipe that you can position um, on there. So, and this project, uh, to give you an idea of how long it took me, um, it took me four hours to paint this. Um, but again, that was just me doing a lot of experimenting and getting it to the way that I, I wanted it. So... Um, it could be done quicker, um, or it could be done even longer. I mean, there's more. There's definitely more that could be done to it, like painting this pipe and attaching it, putting some uh, little highlights, um, some more dirt, the ivy that's going to be put on it growing up. So you could easily put another hour in it. So put however much detail you want to in it. Um, you should definitely make it look the way that you want it to look. Um, and I always, whenever I paint a model or put a model together, I do it the best that I possibly can. Um, I definitely don't try to rush it just to get it done. Um, I think that that's uh, really good advice to not rush it just to get it completed. Um, take your time and do the best job that you possibly can. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, the HO scale kit is from RustyRail.com. They sell resin kits and detail parts both in HO scale and O scale. So be sure to check out their website. A tip that I can leave you with today is try using photo reference. I think it will take your modeling to the next level. You can either do search on the internet or 
uh, just take your camera and take pictures in real life when you're out and about. Uh, but again, I think it's really going to help improve your modeling. Well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload more videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy modeling. <laughs>